Leaving me here, dear, alone with all your letters. You let it... This is Gina from Haunted Flower, and this week I saw Dear John. This is going to be the review that gets all the ladies mad at me, a fellow woman. I'm sorry, but I also had a hard time watching The Notebook. Dear John is the latest Nicholas Sparks novel turned movie following such films as The Notebook and Message in a Bottle. Directed by Lasse Hallstrom, the director of Chocola and Cider House Rules, this story follows a two week romance between Savannah, played by Amanda Seafried, and John, of course, played by Channing Tatum, before he is deployed overseas. They keep their relationship alive by writing to each other on and off for the course of seven years. This is how other people are going to see this movie. Love is a powerful, dreaming the distance of time and space. Star-crossed, moon-crossed lovers meant to be together can withstand any test, climb any mountain, till they find their dream. If you have an overabundance of estrogen running through your body, you will love this film. Women of all ages will love this film. They will totally be engrossed in the long distance romance, Amanda's beautiful hair, Tatum's body on the beach and in uniform, and they will bawl their eyes out on occasion. So ladies, this means you can stop watching my review at this point. You can trust me. You will love this movie. Just go see this movie. Grab your mom, your girlfriend, your sister. All right. Anybody who's left, you can't say I didn't warn you, and it's your own damn fault. Amanda Seafried is a gorgeous individual with giant eyes and beautiful hair who I believe puts forth a lot of emotion when she speaks. The director had a love affair with shots of her hair the way Quentin Tarantino does with feet. I never felt like the emotion that came from Amanda Seafried got much farther than those giant eyes because I never really got the sense that she felt anything deep down for Johnny Boy. There's just something so surface about it. Channing Tatum did a little better in this film with, than G.I. Joe. That's not saying much. He's not my type, but Channing Tatum did make the full dress uniform look pretty snazzy. Channing Tatum tried to do his best to put a lot, forth a lot of emotion in his voice. It didn't make it to his face. There were many scenes that he spent with Amanda Seyfried where his face had like Botox. What do you want me to do? My voice is emotional, so you should be feeling the emotion. It's really disappointing because the best part of the movie is a scene that has him in it and he acts wonderfully in that scene and I think it's because Channing Tatum shares this powerful scene with Richard Jenkins, a more experienced and talented actor, and he plays John's autistic adult father. The scene they have together is amazingly powerful and the best thing about it is Richard Jenkins doesn't even have any lines. He kind of draws all the emotion out of Tatum and brings out this wonderful performance in him without saying a word. You have a movie with this much mush and this much substance. That scene is the substance. And I found the relationship between John and his father to be a much more intriguing, heartbreaking, wrenching, powerfully emotional relationship than the one John and Savannah had. Richard Jenkins is definitely the strongest part of the movie. He's so reserved and subtle, and then his emotions would just jump right out when he's put into what he deems to be like a threatening situation. I really enjoyed his performance. Since this is a letter writing movie, voiceover sequences are fine when you're helping the audience understand the montage of letters, but occasionally they'll just show montages of handwriting without the voiceovers. What are you trying to show me? That Savannah learned cursive? I never feel like John is in significant danger overseas because most of the time they just show him with letters. He's in danger of getting a paper cut. He's part of the special forces. I'm hoping to see something like a mission. The only thing he does is run into a situation recklessly where he has no idea what's going on and then it's his own fault if anything happens to him. I have so many problems with the resolution of this movie but I can't give away spoilers, so I'm just going to sulk on my own instead. Many people will see this movie in a different way than I do. They will love this movie, but maybe I'm just kind of hoping that a few guys out there will be able to separate soppy from substance and maybe back me up a little here. I have a prediction. Men will be unwillingly dragged to this movie on Valentine's Day. The sad thing, men, is that 
You never even get a good shot of Amanda in a bathing suit because one scene she's in a cover-up and another scene she has long sleeves. If the guys are going to be forced to watch this movie with their significant others, why can't you give them just a little bit of eye candy? Ladies, go out and see this movie. You'll love it. Trust me. Just please, think about what your men would want. Do they really want to see this movie? Hey, come check us out at hauntedflower.com for fantastic apparel, action figures, and collectibles. Also, you can Google Haunted Flower and find our MySpace profile, Facebook fan page, Rotten Tomatoes reviews, and I'm on Twitter! If you're local to the Indianapolis area, visit IndieMojo.com for details on how you can win free screening passes. Maybe let them go watch something like From Paris with Love. It has CIA agents and guns and looks like James Bond. That will be my next review coming soon. I just hated this movie. I hated it so much. For anyone out there who's watched Jennifer's Body, cross out Needy. After seeing When in Rome and Dear John within one week's time, I am totally ready to confess my top five movie romances. So that movie is going to be coming very soon, so watch for it on my YouTube channel or at hauntedflower.com. And I see